Everybody, Todd here, All Things Archery and Shooting. Got another bow review today for you. This is another vintage bow review. This one is on a 1977 Bear Archery Tiger Cat recurve bow. This is a 56 inch bow AMO and it's a 50 to 55 pound bow. And this bow is, was only made for a couple years 77, 78, and 79, I believe. So three years is in production. So it's a very limited run of this particular bow. I've been trying to find one of these for a lot of years because I've had one years and years ago. But they're really nice bows. They're short bows. They're a pretty snappy bow too. So let's go get this bow set up. We'll talk about it and we'll get out to the range, put it through its pace to see how it does. Okay. First thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to um, check the poundage on the bow. According to the writing on the bow here, it's a 56 inch AMO 50 to 55 pounds. Let's see what the bow actually pulls, okay? We'll check it with my draw gauge first, then I'll run that one back and I'll check it on my tiller machine. Okay? So with my draw gauge, it's going to pull... Ah, what do we got? Alright, pulls right at 54 pounds, okay? And that's in my 29 and a half inch draw. Now I'll walk back and I'll go ahead and I'll check it with my um, my tiller machine. Okay, on my tiller machine at 28 inches, this bow pulls 52 pounds. So 52 pounds on my 28 inches and my draw only 29 and a half inches pulling 54 pounds. Uh, the bow is, um, it's a future wood bow looks like. It's got a green gray color to it. It's got black glass on the belly, the back of the bow. It's got this one, it's got the bear stamp says produced in Grayling, Michigan. And it's got the silk screen tire cut up top. The bow's in good shape. It's got, I don't see any grazing or cracks in the limbs or anything like that. Well, it does have one minor little piece of um, grazing in the fiberglass here. That's not going to affect anything. It's got some really nice tips on it. The bow, this, this string I put on, didn't come with it. I, I made this string. This is a Daycron string. I had a buddy of mine make this string for me. It's a B55 Daycron. Alright. The limbs, they taper a little bit coming down to the bottom. They taper here just a little bit as you can see. Only thing I can see wrong with this bow, which I hate when people do this, is all these people get a hold of these bows, they don't realize they, they try to drill a set of sights in this thing instead of putting um, our, our quiver, instead of putting on the limbs. You can see it's got two holes drilled. I mean, their holes are drilled pretty decent, they're pretty straight, but the problem is that's awful thin right there, as you can see. And drilling them two spots there weakens this riser. And I don't know why people do that. They just don't have, I guess they don't have any idea or just don't want to spend the extra extra money and get the one that clips onto the limbs. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to fill these. What I do is I make up my own, my own filler with this. I use um, a two-part epoxy and I mix in sawdust with the two-part epoxy and mix it together. Then I fill in these two holes with it and so that'll keep, that'll help strengthen that up a little bit. Let me get you a close-up look at it then we'll set it up and go from there. Okay, as you can see here, we'll start right here at the riser of the bow, as you can see. Still got the orange safety sticker on it from, I mean, you get that off. But there's your writing on it is there. It's got a recessed shelf, which is kind of nice, a, a radius shelf, which is really nice. Big sight window in it. Okay, we're going to put a bare hair rest on this. And come down, see the limbs. It's got only one, it's got two layers of maple in the core. All right. Here's the tips. You can see the tips are really nice. I like this. These are these are cool looking tips here. Now look at the back side of it. And there's your bear tiger cat emblem right there. This is what I was talking about. People that do this, I hate when people do it. They need to just keep their hands off that kind of stuff. Because that doesn't do anything for the bow except weaken it. Because it puts it right on the weak area of the bow, which is right here. So, I, I mean, I've seen this before on bows. And I usually don't buy bows like that. But I've been looking for one of these tiger cats for many years now. And I finally found one. So I'm going to do to fix this, I'm going to have to mix in two, a two-part epoxy up that I use and I mix in sawdust and then I'll fill these holes in 
and then I'll have to sand it and refinish it there, okay? To just fill those holes in. Once I get it done, you won't be able to see them. It's got your bare medallion on it. All right, it's got a nice grip to it. I love the grip on this boat. It does only have one accessory connection here. This is the only issue I see, as you can see right there, it's got a little small little crack in the grazing in the top of the glass. It's not going to affect the way the boat forms though. Coming down the back limb there, here's your limb tip again. And as you can see, there's your, your Grayling Michigan silk screening. All right, this is the string. It's a 16 strand B55 Dacron string Flemish twist. I put some cat whiskers on it. All right. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up now. We'll go ahead and put a um, rest on it and we'll set the knock on and we'll head out to the range and we'll get it um, get it tested on the range. Okay, we're going to get started right off with the um, velocity test. We're going to use our, our chronograph that's about 10 foot in front of the target. I'm going to be about 10 foot behind the chronograph. We're going to first start we're going to shoot are these 430 grain carbon shafts. Let's see what we can do. First arrow. 182 second second arrow 184 third arrow 179 fourth arrow 187. Fifth arrow. Ooh. Let's reshoot that one. That didn't sound right. 167, that wasn't right. We'll reshoot that one, right? Fifth arrow. 5th mm, did it again. Fifth arrow. 176. Sixth and final arrow. 180. Okay, let's try um next one. It's the hunting way arrow. This one here is a 600. Ah. Next we'll try the hunting weight arrow. This one's a 640 grain arrow. Let's reset our chronograph. Okay, we'll put six rounds with six arrows over the chronograph here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and reset our chronograph and launch six arrows. First arrow. 159. Second arrow. 156. Third arrow. 155. Fourth arrow. 159. Fifth arrow. 154. Sixth and final arrow. 156. Okay, now, all right, we're gonna move along to the accuracy part of this test. Sorry about that. It's one of those few cold mornings here in Florida. It's probably about 41, 42 degrees right now with a crisp wind. That's why I'm all bundled up here with a beanie and heavy sweatshirt on. So anyway, let's go and get started. We're gonna, this is my Morel's hog target. It's a burlap target bag. I like these targets. They hold it real well, especially on a hay bale. We're gonna aim right for the center here at 20 yards. We'll shoot three shots. And we'll see how this boat performs it uh, accuracy wise. Let's step off 20 yards, see what we can do.
All right, not bad. We got three shots there, maybe three, three and a half inches. Let's shoot one more round. Not bad, I'll say about 20 yards or so. Again, three, three and a half inch group. Let's try it over on my 3D target now. All right, with my 3D bear target, we're gonna step off same 20 yards or put three shots in it center so we can do. Here we go, 20 yards. I'll take that. It's less than three inches, 20 yards. Both shooting where it's look where I'm looking at, so it is shooting fairly well. Okay. Let's back it up now. Let's do something I normally don't only do. Let's move out to 30 yards and shoot the same target at 30 yards. All right, here we go. 30 yards. Not bad, 30 yards, opened up a little bit. Actually, it shot clean through the target here. So, let's say I got, looks like at 30 yards, I got two in the nine, one in the seven. Not too bad. Okay. Ah. Oh, well, it does shoot where I wanted, where I'm looking at. All right, let's head inside now. I'll take my final thoughts on this um, Bear Tiger Cat bow. Okay, we just finished on the rain session with this um, Bear Tiger Cat recurve bow. This is a 1977 vintage bow. I mean, you figure the bow from 1977, it's what, 40? See, that's 87, 97, 2007, 2017, 40, what, 45 years old? Yeah, 45 year old bow. So, um, I'll tell you what I like about the bow, what I don't like about the bow, and then we'll go ahead and rate the bow on my six crack here like I rate all my bows on. Those six criteria being the quality of the bow, the specifications of the bow, the shootability of the bow, that's how fast I can pick it up, get on target with it, the actual speed of the bow, we're gonna rate how quiet the bow is, and also what kind of value the bow is to you for your dollar. I'll give you a quick sort of math. My, my opinion of the bow, it's a 56 inch bow. So I like a, I like a between a 56 and a 60 inch bow, especially a recurve. It shoots really smooth. I have no hand shock with this bow. Yeah, it's pretty peppy, not 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 bad, but about the same as most of your 70s vintage um, bear bows would do. It still amazes me these bows 40, 45, 50 years old, they still shoot just as good as the new bow you buy today. Um, I do enjoy like the color of the bow. It's like a greenish gray color. 
Uh, the bow handles real well, performs real well. It shoots really, it's pretty, it's pretty accurate for a older bow as well too. It's probably one of my more accurate recurve bows, especially the older ones. Uh, what I don't like about the bow, the only thing I really don't like about the bow is really not the bow's fault. It's never owned the bow before. It's these, um, well, they uh, screwed in two wood screws to put on a quickie quiver connector. The only issue I just noticed after shooting this bow, which is a shame, I'm going to have to see if I can fix this or not. After shooting it, I'm noticing a small split starting to uh, come out right in the middle between these two screws. And because this is in the thin part of the bow, I'm a little concerned about that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this sanded down and get some epoxy in it and try to get it filled in and see if that's going to work. Uh, but that crack just started developing now. It wasn't there before. So that's why, note there went out there that using these bows, never put a, one of them type of quivers, especially on the thin part of the bow like this is. That's the worst spot to put it. Always use a limb mount bow quiver for these. Okay, never do the screw in. If you absolutely have to screw it in, Try use really a smaller screws and pre-drill your holes first and then do it, but still you're just asking for trouble because all you're doing is weakening that riser right there because you got all that pressure from both of these limbs coming right in the middle and you got two holes drilled in it. And that riser is not very thick there and it's it's gonna, unless it's already starting to crack, I've only shot it a couple hundred times. I probably, like I said, most of these bows I get, I shoot them for about a week for the review on them. So I've probably got maybe four or 500 arrows through this thing. And when I first took this off, this, there was no crack there, and now you can start seeing a small hairline split going between these two screws here, these two screw holes. So that's not a good sign. So that means it's probably going to get worse. So I'm going to I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to sand it down, fill it in with some um, two-part epoxy mixed with sawdust, and see if that that fit that should fix it. But in the future, just don't do that to your bow. You're just going to ruin your bow. And if you come across a bow like this, that's a really good bargain. I wouldn't buy it. Only reason I, I would never have bought this bow was because of that, and the reason I, uh, only reason I bought this bow is because I've been looking for one of these um, 77, 78 model vintage Tiger Cats for several years now. There wasn't many of these made, so they're one of the rare bows that Bear Archery has, and I want it for my collection. I had one years and years and years ago, and I, I don't know what to do with it, but I always want to get another one. Um, but I could not. I finally found this one, unfortunately, and someone had decided to monkey up the riser on. So this quick review on that. Stay away from that. Don't do stuff like that. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about my six criteria in this bow. First thing I want to talk about the quality of the bow. Again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm a Bear fanboy. Always have been. Always will be. Bear makes a very nice product. Their products hold the test of time. I mean, I've got some Bear bows that are 60, 70 years old that are still shootable. I got a review on here of an early, early, early 60s um, vintage, like 61, 62 vintage Polar bow. Polar and it shoots really well. So Bo Bear know how to Bear know how to make a bow. He really did. He really, I mean, he really did a really good job on his stuff. He was pretty high in his quality. This bow being 45 years old, except for the minor wear where it's been run through the woods at and shot, it's still in super shape. If it wasn't for those two screw screw holes there, it'd be I'd probably give it about a nine out of a ten. So these bows hold it real well. I mean, there's no splitting in the fiberglass. There's no there's no, no grazing. Well, this has, the only grazing has a little bit right there, but that's normal for a bare bow. So the quality of this bow, I'm going to give the bow an 8 for quality. All right. Uh, for specifications of the bow, the bow is rated from 50 to 55 at 56 inches. The bow is a 56 inch AMO before being strung. You string it up, it comes in just under 53 inches. It comes in at 52 pounds. In my draw length, 29 and a half inches, it comes in at 54 pounds. So at 28 inches, it's pulling between 50 and 55, like it says. So the specs are correct on it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8 for specifications because it does meet the specs on the bow. Shootability of the bow. bow is, I mean, I've been shooting this bow about a week now. And it shoots really well. I mean, I was able to get on target with it quickly. I mean, I always, I mean, for some reason, bear recurve bows just fit me really nice. Makes I've, I've shot a lot of them. But I was able to pick up this bow and get on target really quick with it. No issues at all. So we're going to say 9 for shootability. Speed of the bow. It's, it's compared to other bows of a bear made of the era, the 70s. I mean, I mean you're looking at for a 4 and 30 grain arrow, which is about 8 grains per pound of draw weight. You're looking, um, what, 182 feet per second at 31.7 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. That's pretty respectable for an older bow. And the really heavyweight arrow, the 640 gram, which is my hunting weight arrow, that arrow is coming across the chronograph at 158 feet per second and running about 35 
0.03 kinetic energy, foot pounds of kinetic energy. So I mean, it's definitely not a, not a it's not a slow bow by any means. There are faster bows out there, of course, but it's comparable to bows of this era. So I'm gonna give it for speed. I'll give it also an eight for speed. Quietness of the bow. Well, bow is uh, really quiet. It is, um, it's, I mean, even with the silencers on, it's still, it's super quiet. I mean, there's, there's no like string vibration. There's no string follow afterwards, no vibration in the bow itself. It just shoots really quiet. It liked the heavy arrows, of course, better. It was much more quieter with those, but that's just like any case, any bow. So being quiet, I'm gonna give it another, I'm gonna give it an eight for quietness. Value of the bow. Well, this bow head, I, I paid um, about $150 shipped to my house for this bow. So, I mean, it's not a bad value of the bow. The, the bow's like $149 back in the day, so it's held its value fairly well. Um, it is kind of a rare bow for bear archery, so I think the value will go up. I've seen these before in auction and stuff for up to $300. This one I got a good buy on, mostly because I, can, I negotiated with the owner and told him this is going to be an issue, and I was concerned about that. If it wasn't for that, I'd be willing to pay the full price for this bow. But I was able to get it for $150 shipped to my house, which I think is a fair value for this bow. So for value, I'm going to go ahead and give it a, I'll give it an 8 also for value, okay? I overall like the bow. It shoots really nice. I like a 56-inch bow myself. I'm a, I am concerned about these screw holes with that split start to show. I'm going to try to fix that. If I can't fix it, it's just going to have to be a wall hanger for me because I don't want to be pulling this bow back and it split across this riser here. I mean, the odds of that happening are probably not going to do it, but also that because of being split there getting worse, I'm a little bit concerned. And I like my face and my hands too much. I want to, I've had a bow blow up on me before and it was no fun. So if I can't get it fixed to my satisfaction, I'm just going to use it as a wall hanger added to my collection. But it wasn't, other than that, it's only playing out the bow. I mean, I, I, I mean, it's shot like I remember the bow. It's, I mean, it's in super clean shape. I really like the bow. I like the look of the bow too, the feel of the bow. It's got a little bit of weight to it. It's not really light, so it's got some weight to it, which is nice. Um, I do love the tips on the bow. They're like wood grain tips are really nice on it as well too. So overall, I like the bow. It's a great bow. I mean, for $150, it'd be a good shooter if I as long as get them screw holes fixed. This is more of a, this bow was actually designed for more of an intermediate bow. It's like a step up from their black bear bow that they had earlier. So me some reason being I say intermediate because it's a shorter length and you've got to be able to, and you've got to have your stance and everything just right because the shorter a bow gets, the more, the less forgiving it is. Not so like a 60 or 62 or 64, a much more forgiving bow, more for a beginner. This is more for an advanced or an intermediate to almost advanced. It's a great size for like a tree stand or maybe a ground blind. Okay, so it swings really well. So overall, it's a great bow and I, I really, and I do enjoy it. So. All right, if you like this review, click that like button for me. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And stay tuned. I got some more vintage bow reviews coming up. I got a Browning vintage bow review coming up. I got some more bear vintage bow reviews coming up. I've also got my broadhead test I'm going to be finishing up with that I started. You see, part one's already uploaded. I'll be uploading part two. I've also got a, um, uh, my hog hunting is going to be uploading soon. I, went, I got a great shot at a hog on camera. I mean, it was a really great shot, so I'll be uploading that pretty soon. So I got a lot of cool things coming over the next few weeks for this channel, so be sure to look for them. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And also, next to that subscription button, hit that bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I upload my new videos, all right? Also, I want to um, thank everybody for watching. Thank you for your support. I almost got 7,000 subscribers, so I'm moving up quickly. So thank you again. And, I, and if, if you got any questions, please leave me a comment. I try to answer all my comments if I can. And let me know what you think about the bear. Tiger Cat recurve bow. All right, well, this has been Todd, all things archery and shooting, and until next time, guys, ciao.